Well, here we are again, another Discipleship Empowerment Word coming to you from Marshan, Manitoba. Hey, my name is Dr. James Paul Humphreys, and we're glad that you've joined us today and trust that as we look at another Discipleship Empowerment Word that it may continue to cause us to grow stronger in our Lord Jesus Christ and in our Discipleship walk with Him. As you know, we've been studying the word continue, how we need to continue on. And this idea, I like what it said when it came to continue, is to remain, to abide, or to carry on, to endure or last, to persist or to stay connected, uh, to keep moving forward, to let it flow out of from one's heart and one's mind. Or one of my favorite sayings is just keep on keeping on. If you were ever to get a letter from me, sometimes you'll see at the bottom of the letter, Just say, I sometimes like to say, just keep on keeping on. Keep it on, keep on keeping on for Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, as we're moving into the book of Acts, we've already looked at a few scriptures in Acts where it talked about how they continued to met together in prayer, how they continued to met together in fellowship and communion and around the word of God. And how they continue to be a blessing one to another. But as we move on into Acts, you know, the church is, is really growing in the book of Acts. And it's because the early believers and disciples continued on in the teachings of Jesus Christ. Continued on with their commitment. And I think that's something that we need to all reflect on as we go forward each day. Sometimes it's not easy to continue on. I know especially as you get a little bit older. <laughs> I was thinking, we were just talking just a moment ago, how, you know, we're all, some of us are creeping up there in the years, you know, and it won't be long before we get up into the 70s, and I think, wow, we're still continuing on. But we need to continue on, <laughs> because there are lots to be done yet. There's lots that needs to take place. We need people to continue on, both youth and young people, and and the middle group of the people and the adults and the seniors, we need to continue on. And it's interesting that as the church was continuing on in their walk and their growth, of course, not only did they mature and become more wise in their leadership uh, outreach too, because not only as the church continues to grow as disciples, there need to be a, a continuation of, of uh, leadership. And we see in Acts chapter 6 that the uh, people were beginning to have some concerns that the widows and the poor and all that weren't being looked after. And so they went to the eldership and they said, you know, we need to do something about this. And so the elders, you know, as they prayed and waited upon the Lord, as they continued to seek God, they themselves felt that they should have some deacons. And of course, so then they have, uh, they named various deacons and we know that in chapter 7 of course Stephen is one of the most famous uh, deacons I guess you could say at that time because he becomes the first martyr of the church and uh, so here we see in chapter 6 before we get to chapter 7 it says as they were waiting to uh, choose after they had chosen the seven they chose them and then they were continuing on it says this it says, therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit, wisdom, whom you may appoint over the business, over the leadership, over the things that needed to be done within the church. As I say, looking after the poor and, and, the, and the weak and the, and the homeless and the hungry, you know, that's what the original deacons were commissioned to do. Now, I know that doesn't happen that much nowadays but that's what it was back then and but it goes on it says but we which is talking about the apostles and also who were the elders the overseers of the church but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word you know i i think that one of the changes that i've seen in my lifetime is how the pastor's study has become the pastor's office or CEO, you know, uh, chief executive officer. You know, it seems like in a lot of places, the senior pastor now becomes the corporate director of the organization. 
And but back in the olden days, at least in my olden days, the pastor's office was a place where the pastor studied and prayed, sought God for the messages that he would speak that week, sought God for the people that was under his care. And so often it was like a room that was holy ground. You know, where, you know, the pastor would go in there day in and day out and then he would seek God and then he would seek the face of God and how to minister to the sheep. And so the elders were saying, you know, we need to continue to continue to continue <laughs> in prayer and in the word. And I think there is a key there for us, especially those of us who are in leadership and are in leadership not on the deacon side so much but in leadership on the elder side now remember both sides were supposed to be filled with the holy spirit both sides they were to seek out and say okay the deacons who would do the work of service in the church in the local church were also supposed to be men of and women of the holy spirit power empowered by the holy spirit but on the other side the elders and the overseers were to be people who would continue in the word of God and in prayer. So that there was a delegation that was going on so that the people could continue, the leadership could continue to seek the word. That's why he says, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. You know, so that means they're abiding. Think about that a definition again, how they were going to remain in prayer and seeking the word, how they were going to carry on in prayer and seeking, how they were going to endure in prayer. And I think sometimes, you know, prayer can be a, prayer and seeking the word of God can also be a time of endurance. And I think if there's anything that we could really improve in the local church is that the spiritual leadership, the elders, the pastors, would get back, would get back, would get back <laughs> to continually praying and getting into the word i don't know what you think about that but i think that's you know when we look at the growth of the new testament church we can see the importance of that and so i want to encourage us today those of us who might be pastors in that you know you will never have enough time to do all the things that people want you to do you'll never have enough time You'll get 50 things done today and there'll be 50 more things waiting on the list for tonight and tomorrow. But one thing do not compromise on, do not compromise on, is waiting in prayer, continuing to be in prayer and continuing to be in the Word. All those other things will always continue to be there. And a lot of times I have found out in my older years, some things when you didn't rush off and deal with it, a lot of times they just dealt with themselves. People can figure out how to deal with things. But people need us to be continuing in prayer and in the word. Amen. And so that's what was happening in Acts chapter 6 verse 4 as they were selecting deacons. And it was the eldership that was doing that. Well, as we move over into Acts chapter 13 verse 43 we see here again as they are there's a, a a challenge both a blessing and a challenge that's going on in antioch and we see here in verse verse 43 and now when the congregation had broken up many of the jews and the devoted apostle apostle tites followed paul and barnabas who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of god so there was now I guess maybe a little bit of a church split here right, right in Antioch because there was, you know, one group was trying to be the Judaizers, the ones that was trying to bring them back, bring the people back under, you know, law righteousness. And Paul and Barnabas were standing up and saying, no, it's grace righteousness. And it isn't an interesting that it says here that Paul had to uh, continually persuade them to walk in grace. And not in the law. I've seen, you know, people rather walk in laws. You know why? Because it's like a measuring stick. And so if they can figure like, okay, here's a, a five foot measuring stick. And I'm, I'm already at, 
uh, foot number four, well, I'm doing pretty good. And so like, people like to measure themselves. It's hard to measure yourself when it comes to grace. But it's interesting. It, the Bible doesn't teach us to continue in the law. He teaches us to continue in grace. And that's what Paul was trying to get the people to do, Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. So they're meeting with the church of Antioch, okay, the church that was started in grace. And now Paul and Barnabas have come back. Of course, these legalizers had got in there again. And Paul had stand up and probably had to teach them for hours and Barnabas and that. And we're able to persuade them to turn back to the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that an interesting thought? You know, I wonder what it would be like for elders to go into the churches around about and try to get the people to turn back to grace righteousness and not be so wound up in law righteousness. You know what I'm saying? And that's what Paul was trying to continue to get them to do. And then in Acts 14, uh, verse 22, we see here that, uh, again, there was the strengthening of the new converts and that Paul was trying to get them to continue on in what they've been taught. In verse 21, we'll go there first. It says, and when they had preached the gospel, notice that when they had preached the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, to that city and made many disciples so as they preached the gospel and made many disciples they returned to Lystra Iconium and Antioch strengthening the souls of the disciples exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God so here they're now going having gone on a mission trip or coming back they were in Antioch, and they were to continue to exact or exhort the church. You know, I, I believe that's why it's so important that if a church is sending out missionaries, that we give them time to come back and to speak about what God is doing and how God is continuing to work around the world. God is doing powerful things, and sometimes we need to look outside of what's going on in the local church and see what's going on in the bigger church worldwide, amen? And we need to continue not just to think about ourselves, but we need to consider what is going on and to continue in praying for our brothers and sisters in another part of the world. And so, but he says here that they needed to continue. He exhorted them to do what exhorted them means to really apply pressure, if you want to call it, exhorted them to continue in their faith. Because at this time there was starting to be persecutions and trials and there was a lot of things going on from without and a lot of things going on from within. And that's what he was trying to say, that many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. And so there was tribulations, there was trials, there were things that were going on that was coming against the local church, the local disciples. And they were being exhorted, but continue. Continue on, because the kingdom of God is being built. You know, some of my friends are builders. They're hard workers. I got a guy, friend, that does re, uh, repairs and also kind of cement work. And it's hard work. <laughs> and, you know, but the thing is, they need to continue. They need to continue when they're working so that it will be done properly. And that the finished product will be Something that they can be proud of and thankful for. It's the same thing with the church. We need to continue on. Not not become weary and well-doing or give up in the race. You know, but the prize is one is the one who finishes the finish line, who crosses over, and we need to continue. Well, again, in Acts chapter 20, verse 7, we have this whole idea where it says here, uh, there was ministering in Troas, and they were... I began speaking, it says, Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread. So the disciples were coming together to break bread. Paul, ready to depart the next day, next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. I like that. I like that. <laughs> you know why I like that? Because on the other side of the world, 
people love to get into the word and they let the word get into them and they don't mind to be around for a long time and and to absorb and to absorb and to absorb because they know it's a time of great blessing when you have a teacher or a preacher come and and share and break the word of god with them and and to open up and to reveal they love to hang around <laughs> and this is this is another problem that we have on our north american side wow if somebody preaches more than 45 minutes, everybody's looking at the clock, everybody's looking at the watch, and not only that, you know, I, I sometimes even get lectured before I preach, you know, no, we've got to be done here, the people can't handle this, the people can't handle that. I remember when I was a pastor in a youth group, and, and people would tell me, you can't speak longer than 15 minutes to the young people, because that's all they can handle, that's all they can endure. Well, I didn't believe that. I believe where the word of God is preached, there is life. And where there's life, the people want to be. And I remember in the youth group, sometime preaching 45 minutes to an hour. And the youth group kept growing and growing and growing. And I see that on the other side of the world when we get into the word of God and the word of God gets into us. Now, I'm not talking about entertainment. I'm not talking about just seeing how we can entertain one another. I'm talking about when we get into the word and the word gets into us. And so Paul is getting into the word and he's he's sharing the word with the people. And, you know, they know he's going to leave the next day on a boat trip or another trip off and he says he says to them you know i need to continue and they say paul keep teaching us keep teaching us keep that and we know you're leaving tomorrow but can you keep teaching and the interesting thing you know he kept teaching until midnight and i think i think when when the word of god is being revealed and it's a lie time goes by so quickly time goes by you know even in the morning when we teach here for this half an hour you think wow you have a whole half an hour but then all of a sudden I look up at the clock and it's gone. It's gone. But you know, it's the word of God. And so isn't it interesting here? He spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. I, I, I wonder why the Holy Spirit put that in there. Why doesn't it just say he continued his message? But why does it say he continued his message until midnight? There was other times that Paul, I guess maybe that's why my middle name is Paul. I don't know. I like to talk and I like to talk about the word of God and I like to share the word of God. And it was interesting that in other places, you know, people were there and they were there for long hours hearing the word of God. And some poor young person fell out of the window and fell down on the ground and died. So the, the elders walked back down, the apostles walked back down, and, you know, raised him up and they go back up and he... You know, you know, he's probably dazed about what happened when he goes back up. And they continued on sharing the Word of God. Because the Word of God was is what's life. The Word of God is life. And that's what we need to get into and let the Word of God continually get into us. And that's why I like it here where it says, And Paul kept ministering to them until midnight. You know. Then over in Acts chapter 26, verse 22, he goes on and he talks to us again in 26, 22, which says, Therefore, uh, having obtained help from God, I'm just trying to see here, Acts 26, yeah, I'm in Acts 26, verse 22, Therefore, having obtained the help from God, to this day I stand witnesses both to small and to great, saying to no other things than those who prophets and the Moses who would come. And so the idea here of uh, help from God, this idea that they got help from God. Now I'm reading a new, uh, the New King James Bible that doesn't use the word continue, but in the King James it says they got help from God and I continued to this day to stand. And I like how they, 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 they wrote that in the King James Bible where they said, because of the help from God, I was able to continue to stand. And I think that there's anything that's so important that we do in our walk is that we continue to stand in the Lord. And as you're standing in the Lord, that's where you get your strength. As you continue to stand in the Word and let the Word stand in you, that's where you get your strength. 
So the book of Acts was a, a book where it exhorted the early church to continue on. The mission trips, not only did Paul go out and plant, and Peter and other disciples plant new churches, but they needed to go back around to those churches to encourage them to continue to stick to what they have been taught. You know, uh, sometimes we have an old old idea back in, in front of some of us again who are older. You know, we say if some of the people would see what's going on nowadays, they would roll over in their grave. <laughs> well, that's, and sometimes I'm wondering about some of the things that have been established and some of the things that have happened in the church. And if some of the old saints were to come back, they would be shocked. They would shock. And you know what? Paul and the and the elders and the apostles, they would come back and come back and come back and speak into the church. They were always given a space within the church to continue to encourage the church in the gospel, to continue the, ch the church, to continue walking in the teachings of Jesus Christ. And that's what's so important. Then as we go on into Romans chapter 6, now as Paul is now going to start teaching the churches about how they need to continue in the word, how they need to continue in Jesus Christ. And in Romans chapter 6 verse 1 it says, What shall we send, say then? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may be abound. Be a divided, a house divided amongst itself. But if you've started off your race, early Israel had rejected the things of the Lord. And now he says in verses uh, 1 and 2, I tell you the truth in Christ, I am not lying. He's saying to them, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and continued grief in my heart. So he was saying to you know, I have sorrow and grief for what's going on. For what's going on in the church. What's going on. And God wants not us to be full of sorrow and grief. He wants us to continue to walk in the fullness and the power and the anointing of the Lord. Continue on in the gospel. Then finally in Romans chapter 11 verse 22. He talks about here. Therefore consider the goodness and servity of God. On those who fell, servitude, but towards you, goodness. If you continue in the goodness, otherwise you also will be cut off. So he's saying, be careful. Be careful now how you walk. Be careful how you go for. Remember, you're doing what you're doing in the goodness of the Lord. And continue in him. Continue in his goodness. Continue in his power. Continue in his anointing. Amen. So I'm going to take us to prayer now. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that what we can learn from Acts and then from the book of Acts to Romans, Lord, how we need to continue to exhort one another, to build up one another. Thank you, Lord, that we are to continue to be in prayer and in the word. And I pray, O oh God, that we would find time, that we would cut out some place in our busy schedule, time to get into the word and let the word to get into us, to get into prayer and let prayer get into us, get into serving and let serving get into us. O oh God, that we may continue in the goodness and the anointing of your power this day. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to look into your word. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to study these little words, these little nuggets, Lord, that you are challenging us to hear each day as a disciple. And so, Lord, help us to be a disciple who continually walks in you day by day now and we give you thanks in jesus precious name we pray amen and amen god bless you and continue continue in prayer continue to be in the word continue to serve one another and to continue to be a, a blessing of goodness to all those around you amen god bless you keep on keeping on and Lord willing, we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.